right, will everybody please be seated? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. I love that energy. Thank you. You've been outstanding. Everybody's been paying attention. Uh, I see people taking notes, so really, I don't think anybody can get a better jury than yourself. So just keep up the outstanding. All right, here we go again. We're going to ask you two questions. Uh, and uh, you know the questions, so you know what your answers can be. We have three things. No, no, yes, yes, no, yes. We can reverse that. All right. Juror number 251. No, no. Juror number 252. No, no. Juror number 253. No, no. Juror number 254. No, no. Juror number 255. No, no. Juror number 256. No, no. Juror number 250. No, no. Juror number 249. No, no. Juror number 248. No, no. Juror number 247. Juror number 246. No, no. Juror number 245. No, no. Juror number 244. No, no. Juror number 243. No, no. Juror number 242. No, no. Juror number 241. No, no. And juror number 240. No, no. Thank you very much. All right, defense. Judge, at this time, we're going to be proceeding by way of simulation. Proceed, thank you. I'm marking this tire as a defense exhibit number 24. Right. It is agreed upon by the parties that if called to testify on this issue, Officer Joseph McElligot would testify to the following. That defendant's exhibit 24 is the Firestone Firehawk tire with damage inventory under inventory number 1329652. Recovered from Chicago Police Department vehicle 8489B815R. That was damaged by the Paw McDonald on October 20, 2014. Parties further agreed that defendants exhibit 24 will be moved into evidence without objection. So stipulated? So stipulated. That stipulation is allowed and moved into evidence. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Herbert. Your Honor, at this time the defense rests. Consistent with my rulings on your uh, evidence. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the defense has completed their case in chief. At this time, uh, state you have your We do, Judge. Uh, initially, we'll proceed by way of stipulation and now we'll call the witness. Thank you very much. Proceed then, Mr. Cullen. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Called as a witness, David March would testify as follows. On October 20, 2014, he was a Chicago Police Department detective. On that date, he interviewed the defendant. During the interview, the defendant told Detective March the following. When Walsh slowed the police vehicle alongside McDonald, Officer Van Dyke opened the right front door of the vehicle to exit and confront McDonald. Walsh told Van Dyke to stay in the vehicle as they were too close to McDonald to safely exit their vehicle. When McDonald got to within 10 to 15 feet of Officer Van Dyke, McDonald looked toward Van Dyke. McDonald raised the knife across his chest and over his shoulder, pointing the knife at Van Dyke. In defense of his life, Van Dyke backpedaled and fired his handgun at McDonald to stop the attack. Van Dyke continued to fire his weapon at McDonald as McDonald was on the ground, as McDonald appeared to be attempting to get up, all the while continuing to point the knife at Van Dyke. That would be the entirety of the stipulation, Your Honor. All right. So stipulated? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. That stipulation is allowed and moved into evidence. At this time, State, could you call your uh, witness? State would call Adam Murphy. Uh, 
you know, the seats adjust the moment, the microphones live. So please seat up to the microphone, adjust the microphone, speak into the microphone. Everybody will be able to hear your testimony. We greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Judge. Officer, would you uh, state your name again and spell it for the court report, please? Sure. It's Officer Adam Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y. And you're a police officer with Cook County Sheriff's Department, correct? That is correct. Uh, you testified previously in this case? I did. Uh, and your testimony previously was that you responded to Pulaski Avenue uh, following some other Chicago police officers, correct? Yes, sir. I want to turn your attention and I want to ask you a couple of questions about your observations that you made when you arrived on the scene and you walked up to LeBron McDonald. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. When you arrived, there were already other Chicago police officers on the scene. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what we have marked and has already been introduced into evidence as People's Exhibit Number 226. That's an image of the uh, scene where uh, Laquan McDonald was laying in the street on uh, Pulaski Road, correct? Yes, sir. When you arrived, uh, you exited your squad car? Yes, sir. And what did you do? Uh, I approached the, uh, uh, the person laying on the, the ground. And that person you now know is Laquan McDonald? Yes, sir. What did you see as you walked up to Laquan McDonald on and around his body? Uh, I saw a large amount of blood on the uh, paper. Uh, would you describe uh, just generally the, the diameter, the area that that amount of blood covered? Uh, from memory, maybe a foot by a foot. So about 12 inches by 12 inches. Correct. I'm going to play a portion of this video here, officer. See where I stopped it there, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, would you describe what you see on the video behind the body of Laquan McDonald? That is, uh, just describe what you see on the pavement behind the body of Laquan McDonald. Okay, yeah, it's touchable, right? Absolutely, yes. Right here uh, looks like a, a liquid substance of some kind coming from. It. And that liquid substance, you saw that liquid substance, correct? Yes. Can you describe what that liquid substance was, what it looked like to you? I believe it to be blood at that time. You've seen blood on crime scenes in your career before, right? Yes, sir. That was blood? Yes, sir. And that was flowing from the body of the Juan McDonald? Yes, it was. It's two separate blood flows, correct? In this picture, yes. I'm going to continue the video, sir. Would you describe what you see that blood flow going through? Uh, yeah, continuing to continue. The video speaks for itself. That's all it's best for <coughs> the video shows. Overall. Uh, it's continuing to expand. And it's continuing to run away from the body of the quantum towards the curve. That's correct. At that moment, when you walked up to Laquan McDonald and you saw that blood flowing from Laquan's body, was there any paramedics on scene? No. Did you perform CPR on that off Objection. Objection. Overall? I did not know. Did you see anybody perform? Attention relevance, Judge. We have emotional interviews. I understand. I, I overall need to testify, Officer Murphy. Can you repeat the question? Had anybody performed CPR on Laquan McDonald when you saw blood coming out of the body of Laquan? No. Paramedics weren't even on scene yet, correct? Correct. Thank you, officer. That's all I have. Ross, is that
Good morning, officer. How are you? Good morning. As a Cook County Sheriff, are you required to render aid to a victim by performing CPR? If it's needed, yes. Okay. And you didn't do that in this case, correct? Correct. And you, you know that Chicago police are um, not supposed to do CPR on individuals, correct? I did not know that. I don't know their policy. Okay. Would it surprise you if they're not supposed to do any CPR on individuals? Because they're not trained medical personnel? That, like, again, I, I don't know what their uh, procedure is. I understand you don't know what it is exactly, but my question is, would that surprise you? To not give aid to somebody? That it's not that they are told not to give aid to anyone because they are that, not right now. That's real hearsay. So, wow. well, that's the policy of Cook County Sheriff, right? To render aid, yes. Okay, and you didn't do it in this case. No. Okay. And you, you talked about uh, what you described. I think you said is a a large amount of blood, correct? That's correct. And obviously, you're not a doctor, correct? I'm not. Doctor. You don't know where this blood was emanating from, correct? Correct. And when you were here, you testified, I believe, on September 18th, uh, you were called by the state, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you met with the state, you prepped with them before you testified, correct? Yes, sir. And you never testified that there was a large amount of blood on the scene uh, when you testified on September 18th, right? Correct. Did the state ever ask you that question in, during prep sessions? No. Okay, and you say a large amount of blood. Um, when you said it was a foot by foot, um, our, our doctor testified that there was about half a cup of blood on the scene. Um, do you have any reason to dispute that that would be the amount that was on the scene? Uh, no. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McMahon. Yes, Judge. I know you're not a doctor, but the blood was coming out of the body of Ron McDonald, correct? Yes, it was in the meeting. Sorry. Nothing, Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Can I have the uh, attorneys over here in the discussion? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. McMahon, does the uh, special prosecutor rest and rebut? Yes, we do, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Herbert, any sir rebut? We have no sir rebut, Judge. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the evidentiary portion of the uh, case. Uh, you've been outstanding, so keep up the good work. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have closing arguments, uh, same time, same place, and then we'll see you uh, as soon as you get here. So, again, you're outstanding. Be careful. Thank you. All rise for the jury. Will everybody please be seated? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I want to compliment you on your compassion for exactly yesterday. That was really good, but it took a long time for you to get $100 cash together. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should be talking to uh, Jeff Bezos about getting a raise. So, uh, all right, here's what we have to do. Uh, we have to do the jury instructions. Uh, they will be uh, of record, and certainly the uh, media will be allowed to have these instructions after they, I read them to the jury. The reason why we're going to do this in a private session is because they get the law at the appropriate time, and that will only be after closing arguments in the attorneys. So to eliminate any uh, opportunity that they might get the instructions before, it's going to be a sealed hearing. But again, just wait less than 24 hours, you'll be able to get these instructions. So thank you. All right, at this time, uh, courts in recess. <laughs>